Welcome to Claire's Classes Listening Challenge. This is the IELTS Listening Test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to part one. You will hear a conversation between an officer of the Small Claims Tribunal and a consumer who wants to make a claim. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to six. Good afternoon. How can I help you? Good afternoon. I'd like to lodge a claim. Certainly. Name? Emily Jane Appleby. Appleby? That's an unusual name. Sorry, what did you say your first name was again? Emily Jane. Now, Miss Appleton, could you please fill in this claim form? I've never done that before. Can you help me? Yes, of course. The first part is for your, the claimant's, details. Where do you live? Um, at 1 Yoronga Street, Durham. How do you spell Durham? D-U-R-H-A-M. Of course, I should know that, but it's just one of those names that sounds quite different from the way you spell it. It is confusing. I've seen it spelt with two R's. And what's the postcode for Durham? 4105. Good. And do you work? No, not at the moment. OK, so no work number. What about a home phone number? Yes, I can give you that. It's 7848-3762. 7848-3762. 7848-3762. Eight, right. Now, this part here is for the respondent's details. Who's the respondent? The individual person, company or business that you're claiming against. Is the claim against a landlord, tenant, trader or driver? Well, it's a company that sells home appliances. So that's Trader, then. Just a moment while I write that down. ABC Appliances, actually. Oh, now this part is really important. If the respondent is a company, you must have the company's full and correct name and registered address. I've looked it up on the Internet, and it's ABC Appliances Limited. Good. If we don't get this part absolutely right, you won't have a legal claim. And their registered address? Yes, I've got that written down here. Just a minute. It's, um, 17 Brown Avenue. That's in Barden, isn't it? I think I know the place. My wife bought a vacuum cleaner there last month. Yes, Barden. Have you got the postcode for Barden? It's really similar to mine. Wait a moment. I'd better make sure I get it right. 4065. That's it. And what's the telephone number for ABC Appliances? Oh, um, 72324681. Good. Got that. Now, in the third part of this form, we get to the actual goods or services that are in dispute. I assume you made a purchase from them. Yes, that's right. On the 3rd of February. 2011. And did the goods have any sort of guarantee or warranty? Yes, but only for six months. So it was just a six-month warranty? Yes, they offered me an extended warranty for three years. But I would have had to pay extra for that. Oh, I see. 
Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. You'll need to give a full description of the goods involved, the nature of the defect or fault, and any other relevant particulars. So, tell me, what did you buy? I bought a washing machine. Yes, but what brand, model, and serial number? The brand name was Mallard. And it was the Whisper model. Serial number, just a moment. I've got the warranty papers in my bag. Yes, here it is. Serial number XY303. Great. Now I need to know how much you agreed to pay. It cost a thousand pounds. Did you trade in your old machine? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Okay. Now, what were you given for the trade-in? 250 pounds. So, in actual fact, the purchase price you agreed on was 750 pounds. That's right. And they delivered the goods two days later, on the 5th of March, and picked up the trade-in at the same time. Now, think carefully about this next question. What did the respondents say about the quality of the goods, or the way they would perform? The salesman who served me at the appliance shop said, the Mallet Whisper model has a much shorter cycle, so it uses less power. Oh, and he added, and it will also use less water. Is that true? Well, partly. It does seem to use less water, but both the wash cycle and the rinse cycle go on for much longer than my old machine, so I don't see how it can use less electricity. But the sales assistant also said, this model is whisper quiet. And is it? No, not at all. It's so noisy we can't hear the television in the next room. Excuse me, I have to answer that. Would you mind waiting? I'll get back to you in a minute. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 2 You will hear a talk about keeping children safe on the Internet. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Thank you for coming. It's good to see so many of you interested in keeping your children safe on the Internet. What's in store? Well, firstly, I'm going to talk in general about some common sense ideas and rules for young ones using the computer. Then, I'll give you some information on free educational websites. Finally, we'll finish with question time. I'm sure most of you think that the Internet can be a frightening place in which to let your children roam loose. But let me remind you that it can also be a fountain of knowledge and education. The trick is to avoid the former and utilise the latter. There are programmes available both in your local electronics supply shop and free to download that will keep your child safe to a certain degree on the World Wide Web. A popular one is Online Family Norris, which bars things like military and social websites. I wouldn't advise you to rely solely on a programme to protect your family, though, 
As good as it is, you cannot abdicate your responsibility as a parent. I'm sure you all know that, or you wouldn't be here. When all is said and done, the, the best way to keep children safe is to educate them and keep an eye on them. For this reason, you should make sure the computer which your child uses is kept in a communal space where you can look over their shoulder from time to time. It is paramount that you teach them never to divulge their proper or full name and to never provide personal information, such as where they live or what their phone number is. Tell them that online friends must remain just that, online, unless they are supervised. It is difficult, I know, to teach children about the dangers of the world when they are so naive, so trusting and innocent. But without going into great detail, you must alert them to the possibility that the people they are chatting with may not be who they say they are. It's also sensible not to give them their own email address until they are old enough to use the internet safely. So, all communication from websites will go through you. When they are old enough to use social sites like Facebook and MySpace, Teenagers need to know that whatever postings they put on the web will remain accessible forever. Nothing is ever really deleted there. And embarrassing pictures or remarks may come back to haunt them one day. For instance, when they apply for a job, they could jeopardise their chances as the employer or human resources.